All right, another great tool or device I like to use when I'm improvising is intervals. And if you've you know studied guitar for any length of time, you've probably done exercises like learning your diatonic thirds and your fourths and your fifths and your sixths and stuff like that. And great, and I think you should do that. But then the next question is, is how do you use it? So I wanted to kind of just to give you a little bit of insight as how I look at these things and how I kind of build lines off them. And, you know, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of the exercises where you would take a scale pattern and go through it and learn all your thirds and fourths and fifths and sixths. And I think that's a good thing to do. But what I find more useful is learning them up and down the guitar this way. And what this helps me to do is transition from different positions. So I can create these little lines uh, if I'm playing in this position and I want to go down or up, I can use some of these little intervals and little licks and little sequences that we'll talk about to kind of do that. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone, but of course I want to keep it as musical as possible. So, uh, you know, creating lines and stuff in the heat of the moment when you're improvising and not just falling back on licks is, you know, it's not as easy as you think it is. You have to kind of build up a little repertoire. So... What I like to do is take a, take maybe just start with something simple like thirds on the top two strings, right? So uh, my track that I'm playing is, is the B minor track. So let's just take a look at some thirds going up the top two strings. So, uh, and, and you can start just by simply seeing a chord shape here. So that's kind of part of that B minor chord. Then I'd have this shape here. And then this shape. And then here, and then this shape here. Until we get up to the next octave, of course. Now, uh, you know, we can think about different ways of playing these things, and this kind of goes along with a lot of other ideas too, but, you know, you can think of when you're ascending the scale, you could ascend the notes, right? So I could play something like this. Or I could go up and descend the notes. So still ascending up the, the order of the shapes, but descending the notes. And then, of course, as I'm, if I wanted to do it descending, I could kind of do the same process. I could descend while descending. Or I could descend by ascending. And then, of course, if you want to get even more creative, you could mix and match them. So I could go... So what I'm trying to do is it's like, you know, how many ways can I skin a cat here, you know? Uh, I've heard the phrase is, don't learn a thousand licks, learn a thousand ways to play the same lick. So anytime I, I get something like that, I want to try to see how many different ways I can play it so I can exploit those sounds. And of course, what you want to do is, I'm just giving you an example on the top two strings, but what you want to do is tr uh, kind of extrapolate that through all the different string groups on the guitar. Now, one of the things, just as a side note, uh, you know, we're not really aware of a lot of times is that, you know, by the way that the guitar is tuned, it's tuned in fourths, a lot of these shapes you'll see over and over again, except for between the G and the B string. That's the one that we, when we tune our guitar, that's the one that we change, right? So those shapes are a little bit different, but let's say right here I'm starting on a D note. So if I start on uh, a D note here, it's the same shapes, right? So just something to keep in the back of your mind when you're thinking, wow, there's so much to learn here. But you know, try to use that to your benefit so you're not having to relearn the whole guitar over and over again for each set of strings. You can see that you know, aside from the relationship between the G and the B string, you'll see a lot of the shape, same shapes reoccurring. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add to this, but for now, I'm just going to play a little bit over the track, just using that, some of those ideas that I had and try to make a little bit of music with it, right? Maybe just mixing and matching them, trying to build some melodic motifs just using those thirds on the top two strings, rearranging the order, and maybe playing around with some different rhythms just to get creative with it. Let's try that. get a lot of music out of that bit of information there, right? So, you know, just using those same shapes, moving them around. Of course, now remember our backing track does change keys a little bit there for that E major chord. So I did make some adjustments for that E major chord, but conceptually I'm just using the same thing. And man, I could just do that for an hour straight and just really explore it. And you can make a lot of music just with that information. So of course you want to extrapolate that on other sta uh, scale. Uh, excuse me, string groups. <laughs> All right, so just to kind of expand on that, I'll give you some ideas that you can use to expand on that. So what we have here is we have this note to that note, which is a third. So we can proceed this note with a scale tone. So the scale tone just before this note is the C sharp here. And that we can kind of make that a little sequence. Now with the next shape, which was this, we can proceed that with a scale tone. And then we get something like this. So I'm using that, uh, the first shape that I did, the thirds, and I'm adding to that. Right? And I think this is a really good strategy for building these longer lines because then you can just use that simple shape and then hopefully make a kind of a mountain out of a molehill, so to speak, right? So you're using that as your template and then you're adding some information to it, which allows you to make a little bit more music. So let me demonstrate that for you. Okay, I think this is a really good method to kind of go about things. Just take something simple, get really familiar with it, find a lot of different ways to play that same information, ascending, descending, different rhythmic phrases, and then start adding to it. So let's take another interval, and I'm going to start from the same spot here. Uh, let's take this, let's stay at this D note, and instead of going to the third, let's use fifths. And let's just try to run those up the scale. So starting here, we'd have this shape. Then we would have this shape. Okay. 
So fifths are kind of like power chords, right? So the only place that that would actually change is just between this interval here and right there. That's the only place that's going to change. For the most part, it'll almost be like playing power chords up the scale. Now, just like we did with our thirds, we could ascend, ascend. We could ascend by descending. Right? And then, of course, we could descend, ascend. Or we could descend, descend. So let's play a little bit over the track and see what that sounds like. Okay, so, you know, I just start out simple, just reviewing those shapes, going up and down very simply, and then as I feel more confident that I have them, I can start varying up the order, I can start varying up the rhythm. Of course, I'm looking for that change for that chord or that the E major chord, which note I need to change for that so I can sound melodic. So I'm starting to build up a pretty good repertoire here. Nothing is written in stone, but remember, I want to improvise, so I don't want any super hard things. I just want some uh, ideas that I can kind of gravitate towards as I'm playing, just some kind of a game plan that I can kind of stick in my back pocket. Now, much like we did with our thirds, we could add a note for the scale. So we could go... Right? So there's our fifth interval. I'm just going to add a scale tone before the first tone. And this is starting to get a little bit more modern sounding, of course. Uh, you know, if you listen to modern rock players, a lot of the guys are using bigger interval jumps just to make things a little bit more interesting sounding. Of course, I could do my little kind of back and forth. So I'm just adding to that and, you know, starting with a simple shape and then adding to it and getting a little bit more mileage out of that shape. So let's see what that sounds like.
All right, sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, again, I'm not really going for hard written stone licks. That's not really the point here. I want to be able to improvise freely. I want to be able to listen to what I'm playing and capitalize on something and maybe extrapolate it up and down the scale so I can create some kind of a theme. That's kind of the, the, my mindset here when I'm playing this stuff. So, of course, I'm just showing you on the top two strings. You can do this all over the guitar and all the different string groups. You can do it with different intervals. You could do it with six intervals, fourth intervals. Uh, I'm just using the more common thirds and fifths just to give you some ideas. But again, what I'm doing is I'm trying to build this uh, repertoire up that I can stick in my back pocket, similar to licks, right? You have a lot of licks, and then you, instead of just stringing a bunch of small lick ideas together, I can take this kind of conceptually and move it around and try to make some uh, elongated ideas, and hopefully that will you know, allow my listener to catch on to what I'm doing. All right, let's check it out over the track. <laughs> 